Surprisingly, it was the guards that led the Hoosiers to a Big Ten victory on Sunday afternoon as the Hoosiers defeat Minnesota. We'll get you all the information you need from that game, as well as just a host of news from the football program, uh, ranging from the defensive coordinator leaving through a whole bunch of transfers coming in, including a potential starting quarterback. All that on today's episode. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, guys? It is Monday, January 10th. This is Locked On Hoosiers, your daily source for IU Athletics news, analysis, previews, and as we will do today, recaps. Uh, we will talk about that Indiana victory, their second straight uh, on Sunday over Minnesota. First, though, today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Experience the game like never before with the Sonos Arc, the premium smart soundbar for TV, movies, music, gaming, and more. Visit Sonos.com to learn more. I'm your host, as always, Jacob Rude. I want to thank you guys for making Locked on Hoosiers part of your day and your first listen every day. Just a reminder, we're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube at Locked on Hoosiers. As always, you can subscribe to Locked on Hoosiers wherever you're listening to your favorite podcast app. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Hoosiers and on Instagram at Locked on Hoosiers. A lot to talk about today. We're going to start, obviously, with that men's basketball victory on Sunday afternoon. Uh, in case you missed it, Hoosiers win 73 to 60 over Minnesota. Wasn't the simplest of wins. Uh, students were back on campus. It was a nice atmosphere. It was a little, uh, it was a game of runs, we should say. Um, the Hoosiers up and down throughout. Started the game uh, cold, had a strong run uh, late in the first half. Let Minnesota get back into it in the second half. And then ultimately won going away. And it was a game that... It was a balanced offensive attack, but it was certainly led by the guards, specifically Xavier Johnson and Rob Finnessy. Two much maligned players were absolutely crucial in that first half. Uh, they combined for 22 of the 39 points for Indiana in that first half, were a combined 6 of 12 from the three-point line. Rob Finnessy came into this game with eight made three-pointers on the season. He made four in the first half alone. And it was a product of the defense Minnesota was playing, which I think will be a defense you could see more down the road. Uh, maybe not to the degree that Minnesota was. They were fully uh, willing to give up three-pointers to Finnessy and Xavier Johnson. And when I say fully willing, there was nobody within five feet of these guys on their three-point attempts. I think there's a difference between living with giving up three-pointers to Finnessy and Johnson, which uh, is the right call to make, and what Minnesota was doing, which was just not even bothering closing out on them. Because then it's like you're on a practice court, like you're just shooting around, and those threes become a lot easier for those guys. Uh, Minnesota certainly adjusted in the second half. They did not take that approach, approach in the second half, but the damage was already done. As I said, those two combined for 22 in the first half. Uh, only five points combined in the second half. Hoosiers went to kind of the defense, locked things down in that second half. Um, it looked like they were going to go win going away, honestly, after the end of the first half. Had a double-digit lead and then let uh, Minnesota not only get back into the game, they briefly led in the second half. And uh, the Hoosiers uh, rebounded and went to a interesting closing lineup that featured um, Trace Jackson Davis, Race Thompson, Finnessy, Xavier Johnson, and Trey Galloway. That is not an offensive lineup. That is certainly a lineup uh, that you're going out there to absolutely lock down on the defensive end, and it worked. Uh, that was a that might have been the exact same lineup they closed the Ohio State game with. It was a variation of it at the very least. Um, but the the end result, IU goes to that lineup. Minnesota had six points over the last eight minutes and six seconds. 
They made one of their last 10 field goals. Uh, Minnesota spread out the Hoosiers at times. They play a five-out offense. There were some breakdowns for the Hoosiers defensively, but um, when the rubber met the road and Indiana had to start getting stops, they did, and Minnesota could not score enough to uh, keep the Ho- or keep up pace with the Hoosiers. So um, it was an impressive victory. Uh, there was certainly the threat of kind of an emotional hangover with this or coming off this uh, Ohio State win. It helped that the students were back on campus. It helped that a number of players stepped up. Uh, five players finish in double figures. Xavier Johnson, Rob Finnessy, Parker Stewart, Race Thompson, and Trace Jackson Davis. Trace finishes with a double-double, 13 points, 12 rebounds. Very much the focal point of Minnesota's defense. The reason Xavier Johnson and Rob Finnessy were so open was because they were uh, sitting in the lap of Trace Jackson Davis, basically. They weren't doubling, but five guys had their foot in the paint on most defensive possessions, so they were daring the Hoosiers to beat them from outside. They did in the first half and then pretty much just uh, locked down in the second half and didn't let Minnesota score to close the game, so... Uh, not quite as pretty as the Ohio State game was, but still effective. Anyway, anytime this team picks up a win, especially when it's closing out a game, uh, it's impressive. And we talked about that after the Ohio State game, that it was a team learning how to win, and that was a big step in the right direction. I thought tonight, well, I should say today, uh, that was another step in the right direction for the Hoosiers to uh, take a Minnesota team that played pretty well in the second half. Um, They shot ultimately ended up shooting 37% from the field in the second half, but uh, they cut into that lead and had the lead. So they were playing well early on in the second half and Indiana turned off the faucet, so to speak, and did not let that um, snowball into anything else. So from a a mental standpoint, that was an impressive victory, even if it wasn't the prettiest. Uh, We mentioned Trace Jackson Davis. We're not actually going to talk about him in our kind of three players uh, segment here in a moment because I wanted to talk about three different guards who led Indiana to victory. We talked so much about kind of what the guards do wrong or how they hold the Hoosiers back that they deserve lots of credit. I thought there were three separate guards that really stood out for the Hoosiers on Sunday. So we're going to talk about three of them here in just a moment. First, though, guys, it's the new year. So that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. Built Bar makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good, you'll want to eat it. Unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky or waxy or taste like a chemical spill, uh, Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. They have 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, 17 grams of protein. Compare that to any of your favorite chocolate bars, and it's going to be healthier for you. Even if you're not a huge fan of working out, you can at least eat something that tastes good and is good for you. That way, when you enjoy a delicious Built Bar, you can almost count it as a workout. I won't tell if you won't. Uh, Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thanks for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. You guys will have to bear with me a little bit. I think I have a bit of a head cold, so I'm trying to keep the coughing to a minimum today. I'm sure you do not want that ASMR. Uh, So uh, if you hear random pauses, it's because I am muting, so I do not cough in your ears today. Let's talk about a trio of players who stood out on Sunday. Mentioned one of them already, but Rob Finnessy, one heck of a game for him. He is certainly turning things around this season. Uh, Better and better performances over the last couple weeks, dating back to after that Crossroads Classic game. Um, And in the first half on Sunday, he was four of eight from the field. All three of them were, or all four of them, excuse me, were three pointers. Uh, Had a couple rebounds and assists a block and a steal. He was a plus 15 in that first half, a first half where the Hoosiers led by 10 at the break. So he was easily one of the most impactful players in that first half. 
He was a team high plus 22 in 29 minutes on the night. Again, I say on the night, on the day. It was a noon, a noon tip off that clearly I still have not adjusted to. He was a plus 22 on the day, uh, team high, and I just thought he played really well. He only attempted one shot, uh, or excuse me, two shots in the second half, only attempted one three pointer, I should say. He missed it still going four of nine from the three point line. More than good enough on the day. He ended up with uh, three assists, four, or excuse me, four assists, three rebounds, a block, two steals. Did not turn the ball over. Indiana only had six turnovers. Uh, again, for a team where that was a huge issue early in the season, six turnovers, really, really well done. Shooting 37.5% from the three-point line, too. So two of their uh, biggest weaknesses early in the season were not weaknesses on Sunday, and I think that's a big reason why this team picked up the victory on the night uh, on the day, excuse me. Next player is Xavier Johnson. Again, first half, he goes three of five from the field, two of four from the three-point line, had 10 points, uh, two assists, two rebounds, a block as well. You love it when some guards get blocks. All three of the blocks in the first half came from the guards, actually. Tamar Bates had the other one. Again, uh, Xavier Johnson was just being left wide open to shoot three-pointers. I don't think I'm ever going to get used to that jumper that he has. But again, when you have as much time as they did, those are going to feel like practice shots. And you're able to get in rhythm, get the laces right, and knock down shots. And that's what those two did in the first half. And that was vital because they were doubling down on Trace. He uh, only had four points on five shots in that first half. Uh, they were daring the Hoosiers, and specifically Xavier Johnson and Rob Fennessy, to beat them, and the two of them combined for 22 points, which uh, was absolutely huge. It made Minnesota change the way it defended in the second half. Uh, they did not allow those three-pointers that they did in the first half, and that's part of the reason why Trace then went four of six in the second half, had nine points. Trace was also just more... Uh, quick, I guess, with his um, movements and his decisions on the offensive end, basically made a move before the, the defense could double. So I thought Xavier and Rob Fennessy were vital in that first half for, um, for the Hoosiers and to force Minnesota to change how it did things. Also, again, for the second game running, He's only been back for two games, but for the second game running, Trey Galloway made an enormous impact on this game. And again, it was off the bench, and he was a part of that closing lineup. Again, he finishes with just six points, uh, three rebounds, an assist, um, a block in 21 minutes, but <clears throat> most notably... He was a plus 20 in those 21 minutes. So raising some questions about um, maybe what his role is on this team, because if you want to compare it to Miller Cop, he only played 22 minutes, was a minus four in the plus minus, only attempted three shots. There's, I think, two arguments that you could make. You could make the argument that Galloway is bringing a, a level of energy and IQ to this team that is uh, valuable and we've seen in the last two games has been a difference maker. And if he he's one of the five best Hoosiers, I would say, right now as of January 10th. Um, so that is a pretty strong argument to put him in the starting lineup. The counter argument and the one I'm still kind of siding with right now, I think his energy is a bit more valuable off the bench because it can provide a spark in a game if your offense isn't playing well to start off, even if they are playing well, to be able to go to the bench and not lose anything is valuable. So it'll be interesting to see how Mike Woodson handles that. I don't think he would put Galloway into the starting lineup yet. 
because I don't think Miller Cop has played poorly necessarily, but uh, Galloway is absolutely going to be getting big minutes going forward. Um, the Hoosiers are basically at this point going seven deep um, with the subs getting kind of one rotation in the first half and then maybe a second one depending on how they play. Um, on Sunday, basically seven guys played 20 minutes or more. Parker Stewart technically only played 19, but he's obviously a vital piece of that starting lineup. Uh, Michael Durr and Tamar Bates only played five minutes. Jordan Geronimo played nine. So um, this this is pretty much you get your regular rotation in the first half. If you play well, you get another shot at it in the second half. If you don't, then we're going for the win and better luck next game. So I don't mind it. Um, it's giving guys chances still while still rewarding the guys that are playing well. And Galloway is certainly one of those guys playing well. So the more minutes you can find for him, the better, because that was a strong performance from him. We'll have more time to talk about this uh, IU victory and this IU team the rest of the week. They do not play again until Thursday, so we'll have plenty of time to discuss them. We interesting to see how many, or I guess if they get votes in the top 25 in today's poll, as you're listening to this, the polls might already be out if you're listening to this. A Penn State loss really hurts them, but um, I think if they pick up a couple road wins here in the next week, we could be talking about a top 25 Indiana team, which is a very happy thought. So we'll discuss them more this week leading up to that game on Thursday. There's a ton to catch up on with the football program. Uh, we did not talk about any other kind of news on either Thursday or Friday's show. So as a result, we just missed a mountain of stuff. Charlton Warren has left the program. Uh, another defensive coach has left the program. We have transfers coming in. We'll get you caught up on everything, but only after I tell you guys about an incredible app everyone who buys gas needs to know about. It's called Get Upside. I used it last week when I filled up the tank. Uh, it was simple. I downloaded the app, found the gas station I was going to, used the promo code SCORE. They had an offer for me. You can get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back. I claimed it, drove to the gas station, checked in, filled up my gas tank. 24 hours later, I had the money on, in my account on the app. Uh, it's a free app to download. Use that promo code SCORE to get up to the 50 cents per gallon cash back. You can cash out at any time, whether to your bank account, whether to PayPal, uh, an e-gift card to Amazon or other brands. It's simple. There is no catch. Just download the free GetUpside app. Use that promo code SCORE to get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. Again, that's promo code SCORE. We're going to jump through a lot of things with this football program because a lot of stuff happened in the four days since we did not uh, really talk about the news around IU Athletics. So the most noteworthy, Charlton Warren is an left the program on Saturday. He is going back to UNC. He will serve as the co-defensive coordinator and the defensive backs coach at North Carolina. He's serving as a co-defensive -def coordinator alongside Gene Chizik. Uh, that is a place Warren has coached before. He was the defensive backs coach there at UNC in 2015-16. This was a surprising one. I did not remotely expect Warren to leave. I think there's two sides to this. On one hand, if you look at some of the defensive numbers, the Hoosiers definitely were not as good defensively uh, in 2021 as they were in 2020 under Kane Womack. Um, at the same time, we spent the whole year talking about how much this team relied on its defense. And when you put so much pressure on them to perform, any mistake is going to be magnified. Ultimately, I don't think the defense was probably as good as it was in 2020, but it certainly was not a weakness, and I still think it was a much better defense than the statistics may have shown. So many times they were beaten down and eventually broke by the end of the game. Uh, defensive line coach Kevin Peoples was hired by Missouri for effectively the same position uh, with Missouri. He's serving as co-defensive line coach. 
so two defensive coaches departing over the weekend, leaving some holes for Tom Allen to fill that I'm not sure that he expected to fill at the end of the season. Uh, the Hoosiers kind of traded with Missouri, though, because on Thursday, now you got a big transfer in Connor Bazelik, quarterback committed to the Hoosiers from Missouri. He's a former four-star recruit. He was a two-year starter at Missouri. His, his true freshman year, he only played three games, was redshirted. Then he won the starting job uh, in 2020, was 5-3 and three as a starter, uh, play, or threw for 2,300 yards and seven touchdowns uh, in his freshman season, was named co-freshman of the year in the SEC. No small feat. That's the SEC. Uh, this past season, he played 11 games, threw for 2,500 yards, 16 touchdowns to 11 interceptions, um, <clears throat> kind of lost the starting position by the end of the year. There's some debate in the bowl game for Missouri. He did not play with a leg injury. Based on what I read, there's a chance he kind of lost out the starting gig to Brady Cook, uh, I believe a freshman in his own right, uh, a redshirt freshman. And an injury had sidelined Bazelik. Um, he did not enter the portal until after the bowl game. He said when he entered the portal, he wanted to be there for his teammates one last time. Couldn't get healthy to do so. Uh, ultimately entered the portal. There was no coaching change, so not entirely sure why he entered the portal. Uh, but, I mean, we've seen with the Hoosiers this season, any number of things can lead to that. Ultimately, though, he comes to IU as a potential favorite for the starting position. Uh, he, I don't know that there is a favorite for the starting position at quarterback for the Hoosiers. Jack Tuttle, obviously the incumbent with the most experience. Donovan McCauley is the kind of heir apparent. And now Connor Bazelik comes in as kind of the middle ground. Uh, he has, He's going to be a sophomore, redshirt sophomore. So a um, little more experience than McCauley, a uh, little less experience than Tuttle. It's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out. Uh, but Tom Allen said on signing day that he wanted to add a transfer quarterback and a recruit. Here's your transfer quarterback with Bazelik. So that's a big one for the Hoosiers. Could be your new starting quarterback. Only time will tell on that. He will enroll for the spring semester as well. So he'll be a part of spring practice, which is huge for him because I don't know if he would be in the conversation otherwise uh, for the starting spot. Two other names quickly. Miles Jackson committed to IU from UCLA, an athletic edge rusher. He had a knee injury. 2020 that basically kept him out the whole season only played us sparingly this past season he has four years of eligibility left a uh, former three-star recruit i believe uh, but gives iu some athleticism on the defensive line jared casey linebacker from kentucky committed iu as well again a former four-star recruit he played only 16 games. I shouldn't say only. He played 16 games across three seasons, really 15 games the last two seasons. Um, not a ton of production, though, but he'll come to IU to replace a linebacker core that obviously is losing Micah McFadden. There's still no word on Cam Jones, whether he's staying or going, I believe. So um, it could be a one that's filling two huge holes in the linebacking core. So any number of names is possible. So. IU has been very, very, very active in the transfer portal. They're going to need to be active on the coaching front as well here in the coming weeks to hire a new defensive coordinator. We'll keep you updated on that when it happens. Thanks again, guys, for making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen every day. We'll be back with you this week. We're going to try to get Locked on Mizzou's host to come talk about Connor Bazelik at some point this week. We'll also talk about the men's and women's basketball teams. Both of them play on Thursday. Now for your second listen today, head on over to Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs, hosted by your boy Q, with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. Appreciate all the feedback you guys have given. Follow us on Twitter, subscribe to the podcast, leave a rating and review. 
Most importantly, have a great Monday and Elio.